What is up everybody? Welcome to this week's Jesse Speck YouTube video. Behind me you see there's a large monster watching me from behind. That's a JZA80 Mark IV Supra and it's an import from Japan and we've been struggling to get it road legal in Switzerland due to the fact that it's failing smog tests and we actually realized that the major problem is at the cold start. So there's only one way to work around that. We've even tried with a new modern catalyzer, etc. There's only one way to do it correctly, and that's going the programmable ECU route. So I had one Link G4 Plus ECU in stock, and we're going to use an expansion harness as well. And of course, an AEM wideband sensor and AFR um, gauge in order to allow us to have precise closed loop AFR tuning possibilities and anyway so today join us we're gonna install this ECU and might actually get some tuning done and get this baby road legal in Switzerland so without further ado join me and let's dive right into it so the first step of uh, installing the ECU of course as you know it's a plug-in ECU from Link so that means we're gonna have to remove the stock ECU in order to replace it with the Link ECU inside the stock casing so first of all let's remove the stock ECU that should be located the footwell basically for the passenger side since this is an import car so it's the passenger side it's an RHD car so we're gonna open up there and see what we can find and remove the old ECU Let's go! So see here we have the passenger footwell and I've already removed a few screws so we can see the ECU is pretty easy to access. You remove the couple of screws that are holding this protection in and then here we have our ECU hiding behind there. I can see that there has been some stuff spliced into it. I don't like to see that, but I guess that's just part of the game. So let's take a look at it and remove this ECU. Okay. So, when working with ECU components such as electronics and everything, make sure to use a static anti-static electricity bracelet in order to protect your electronics. That's really important. So we have here an expansion loom. We're going to do that. We're going to use that one in order to have an input of the wideband sensor in order to give it get better tuning results and here is the link g4 here is the link g4 plus that we're going to be installing into this stock ecu that you see over here so let's get started and in here an anti-static protection we have the ECU that is in here. Toyota Supra ECU for manual and non-VVTi engines. Very important when you install these ECUs, always make sure to take a read in here before going too far. And they always send stickers with it as well. So that's always cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this first and see if there's any important stuff written in here that I shouldn't take care of. 30 minutes later. Okay, so I've gone through the basics and as usual, anti-static handling guidelines, make sure to use this. That's the essential part. This is a bracelet against it. And it's otherwise a pretty straightforward installation to do it. So anyway, I'll be putting the expansion loom as well. So for the moment, let's take a look and see at least if both plugs are identical. So I'm gonna take this anti-static bracelet here and let's open this up and compare them and see if they're identical. So 
that is connected to the table, of course. So here we have the cable coming out here. And let's compare if both plugs are identical. And it looks pretty good. Can you see that? That shows that we bought the right ECU. That's already a good thing, but that's not always a given. And from there, let's start installing it. So I'm going to be opening the old ECU. Just to be safe, I'm going to put this link ECU back into the... There we go. Yep, that was some glue. So this one is glue closed. Okay, so this one's open. So we're going to be needing to use this part. And I'm going to remove the top as well. Don't go any way on me. So I started prying a little bit over here. It's always a bit painful to watch this kind of thing, but it can't be helped. As the Japanese would say, shoganai. Okay, so we're getting there. Be careful not to damage anything with a screwdriver. And here we go. So we removed both covers here. That's basically what we need from this ECU. And we'll be removing the brackets as well in order to be able to reuse them on the other EC. So let's start removing this. The ECU is now naked, basically. I'm gonna put my thing connected to the table. Let's start by removing this cover. Oh man, it just glued itself back on. <laughs> that was quick. There we go. Upper cover. Grab the new ECU. So this is the upper cover, so I'm debating if I should first, what is the cleanest way to, so basically let's just take a look, I'll show you what this is supposed to look like. So see this will go on like this, and then we put the other one on the bottom. What I need to figure out is how I'm going to get these. Uh, plugs out. I might have to make a little hole somewhere to make the cables go through So I don't think they made a hole for that on purpose. So I'm gonna have to make one myself One thing for sure though is the bracket that we're talking about here So I'm just gonna move this guy out of the way This guy here is gonna be going on here Okay like stock basically like this okay so this means that i need to think also of how the cables will come out according to these brackets because i don't want things to get in the way so anyway let's let's just probably install the brackets first and then we'll think of modifying the the casing later for the plugs so let's quickly remove as well the lower cover as you can see here so here's what the naked ECU looks like, the stock one. Here you can see what it looks like. I'm going to quickly take that and put it away so it doesn't get destroyed. 
I can keep it for in case it's ever needed again. Put it away. And here you see the lower case. Honestly, I'm already going to install the lower case because I'm not going to be... Well, I could, huh? It's probably actually easier to make a hole here for cables to come out, as you can see here. So I might actually do that. Yeah, let's maybe do that. So if this comes on like this, see? I might actually... might be actually easier for me to make a hole here and get the cables come out than trying to modify this one. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I've done two holes. One hole for the one hole for the plug and one for the expansion loom. So the plug, I decided to put it in a way where I can fit the plug through here. But on top of that, so also really important, clean off your edges of the holes you make in order to avoid damage. But I made it just in a size that, boom, it clicks in here and it actually doesn't move, it stays in there. So that's different than what I'm used to do because usually I pull this cable all the way through here and then you can plug it in. But I thought, why not doing a way where it's sort of stuck in here with a slight, slightly smaller hole and like that at least it will not move around. So now for the extension loom, make it a little bit easier like this. So we go through here. There we go. And here you see we have both our cables popping out like this. So let's reassemble everything. Again, put back the bracelet on. Let's start by installing this one. So we turn it upside down here. And then like that, I can adjust a little bit the cable length, make it a bit more good looking in here. There. So this is what it's going to look like. I made the cable just go behind here like this so it's a little bit hidden. And I like how this feels, it's very rigid. So let's put this cover back on. What I like to do is take a picture of what cables go on what connector just so I can remember easier. I do that with my phone usually. So like that I have the data and it will never be lost. With all the pin numbers and everything so like that I have everything I need okay so this is how it's gonna look put this back in here you can see once both cables are inside um, and with the plug coming out like this gives it a nice clean feel so good so let's put the other cover on top so everything's protected oh yes I forgot one thing sometimes there are little switches. Let me just see. We haven't written anything about that. Some Link ECUs have a little switch that you have to activate or not, depending on the model you have. And it seems like this one doesn't have it. So that's, that's a good thing. So I can close this up. Make sure the cables are protected. Everything's looking good. Okay, so let's start closing everything up again. So 
So would you look at that? So we have the ECU back together. Here we have the plug. So super easy to put the mapping pl uh, plug on. You screw that on and it's nice and rigid. Really like that. And here you have the expansion loom coming out this way. Okay, so now what we still need to do is put on the brackets. And there you go. Full install of a Link ECU into the stock Toyota Supra JZA80 factory casing and everything with the stock brackets ready to plug in with expansion loom installed and mapping plug in the casing. Looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, so as you can see it's not that difficult to install but here's the ECU with the plugs and the expansion loom coming out. I put a little sticker just to make it that everybody knows there's a link ECU inside including the cups and here's the expansion loom we're going to be uh, cabling in new stuff really soon and I will put the ECU back into the car and let's see if we can get the car started right away and then I'll start adding the extra features and the extra stuff through the expansion loom so I can start doing the closed loop tuning of the ECU so let's do that join me Yep, the ECU is ready to go back in. Let's install it. in its place. I'm gonna leave for the moment only one screw fixing it in because we're still doing some testing. So anyway let's start up the ECU and the car and see if everything functions. Here you see where everything's coming out. So now I can hook up my computer and go on. Okay so now I'm gonna go into the car. I'm gonna hook up my computer, unlock the ECU, with its serial number, load a base map onto it that allows me to start the car and activate the closed loop. And also I had to modify how the fuel pump is working with the system. Otherwise the car will not start. So let's give it a first start. Pretty good for a first start. Later. Okay, so I could get all the steady state tuning of the fuel and the ignition done. Let's do some first power runs. Okay, now that we have the AFRs that are perfectly on point, let's try to add a little bit more timing in and see what we can gain from this setup. Okay, so the runs are really promising. I could see that with ignition I could pick up easily 20 to 30 horsepower just with 2 degrees or 3 degrees of extra advance. So I did a few extra pulls and this is the final result of what we picked up.
All right, we're back in the office. So we just tuned the Supra. This car is in for getting road legal. So honestly, uh, I just wanted to figure out what sort of power the car can make just with a simple retune, keeping the stock boost system. The only thing I changed is that I made the twin turbos not work in a sequential form, but in a, a dual form, so really parallel form. Thanks to Mike, shout out to Mike, Supra Mike for helping me with that. And basically all I did is adjust ignition and fuel and with stock boost pressures we could go over 400 horsepower which is expected but it's a good number when you just think about it that all we did is change how the turbos function. We still have a catalyzer in it and we have just a catback intercooler and a pod filter. That's it basically. So the myth is true. You can make pretty big numbers with these engines without doing much just simply with having a tuner who knows more or less what he does good job jesse no i'm joking but yeah anyway just so i wanted to show you that it's also it's particularly easy on this car uh, all you have to do basically is take off both caps of the stock ecu put them onto the link one and make holes to, so the cables can come out plug it in have a good base map. The stock one will not run the car, so I had to do a few adjustments before that. And then after basically in like maybe two or three hours, I got the car fully tuned. And now what I've been doing recently is doing the cold start tuning. That is a whole different ball game that also very little knowledge is out there. So performance tuning is one thing and cold start tuning and emissions tuning is totally a different thing as well. So I learned a lot and normally in a month or so I'll be going to the inspection and see if my work was done correctly. And of course the horsepower I'll be putting it back to 280 as it should be because I want the car to be road legal and I do not want to get in trouble by the cops and I don't want it for my customer either. So I'll be putting back the figures to 280 horsepower and delivering the car like that to the customer and getting all the homologations done. But anyway, I thought it would be interesting just to show you guys what is the potential of that car with very little uh, modifications and a good tune. Um, again, shout out to Supra Mike. Make sure to check out his YouTube channel. He is, in my opinion, among all my friends and people I know, the Supra God. One of the most competent Supra tuners I know out there. And he's, his own car has done over a thousand horsepower and more. So make sure to give him some love on his YouTube channel. He helps me all the time, gives me good advice, and I really appreciate his help. So anyway, so this video was pretty fun to do. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this kind of content and if you want to see more Supra stuff, make sure to tell me in the comments, but also subscribe and like this video because it's only in that way that YouTube will realize that you are actually enjoying this content and it actually might be pushed further to other people. So without further ado, I'm going to let you go now and thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.